stream elements. Mm. Stream elements. So here's the thing. I'm not sure if you can hear us while we talk or not. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Yep. Man, can you hear that rain? A little bit. That's how people know you actually live in Florida, though. Yeah. I've already got two people. So the cool thing about this restream, I got two people. It tells me how many are actually live watching at the time. And we got three on Facebook. So, oh, BJ says she can hear us. So, well, there you go. Just, yeah, it's kind of a behind the scenes, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, let me share these out. There we go. You heard that? Yeah. <laughs> it's raining cat and mice outside. Yes, it is. <laughs> See what you did there? Yeah. <laughs> That's the wrong title for those of you who are, are peeking. So we're going to try to get that... Uh, Renamed. Shared. Are you muted? I uh, guess we're live. Uh, I think Roland is coming back inside the stream currently. Uh, I'm trying to figure out this. Just give us a second. My name is Alex Galmore, by the way, as it says on the bottom of the screen. Uh, this will do this if I can. 
Hey, hey. Oh, there's Ron. Okay. <laughs> so you, you soloed for, for a minute, didn't you? Yeah, for a second. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't realize what was happening until this happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's weird because, you know, I kind of warned you about it. And just uh, as you heard that big uh, thunder clap, um, we lost power here. And it just blinked enough to shut everything off, and, and we had to reboot. Oops. Now I'm getting uh, echoes from where I was seeing if everything was live. So uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, sorry about that uh, brief snafu. Uh, you are now with us on Silverline one-on-one, and tonight we our featured guest is Alex Gallimore. woo woo yeah. What's up, Alex? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> so, I uh, so for all of you, uh, you need to get a good look at him now because, in, in just a, a matter of moments, he's going to turn the phone, uh, his phone around, and we're going to uh, watch him draw during the duration of uh, our conversation tonight. Uh, but I asked him if he would at least uh, at least look once into the camera and smile for everybody, <laughs> so everyone would know the uh, the man uh, the man behind the pencil. Um, because we see Alex uh, quite a bit on our streams, uh, penciling. He's uh, he's a one of our first pencilists who uh, <laughs> did participated in the Silver Line streams. That's right. How to become a pencilist <laughs> <laughs> by Alex Gallimore, yep. right? Um, so yeah. So uh, let me make sure. Let me go back here and make sure my uh, little stream thing is running here, so I can see chats. Um, open in the browser. I'm gonna welcome everyone. One in the chat. Welcome everyone. Um, so yeah, if uh, if you've got questions as we go along, please uh, don't hesitate to uh, post them. We are live on uh, Facebook. We're live on YouTube and we're live on Twitch. So any of the three platforms, if you've got a question, just post it. Um, I'll eventually see it. May not stop immediately and ask it, but I'll, I'll see it and uh, ask Alex um, the question. See if we can't get some uh, some good answers from him. I told him uh, earlier. I said, "Look, man, I'm going to ask you all kinds of stuff." I said, "So be prepared." And uh, he essentially said, "Bring it." Yeah. <laughs> so um, so yeah. So, how you doing, Alex? I'm uh, doing good. It's a yep. chill Monday. Yep. Did you work today? I uh, Technically, yeah, I penciled. I did not. <laughs> hey, that's work, right? I, yeah, I did not <laughs> uh, work on my other job today. But no. Gotcha. Yeah. So, what is, so I have to ask, what is that, what is that behind you? Is that, that looks like kind of like a wardrobe. So, um, this is a bunch of random clothes my mom wants to sell on ebay but hasn't oh yeah, <laughs> yeah i gotcha yeah. now does, does she like ebay uh she, yeah she did uh she just hasn't done it in a while she uh she has a bunch of stuff she still needs to sell um but uh yeah so temporarily this is in my office space <laughs> but yeah Um, did you cut out again? <clears throat> I'll do this Let's a little more. Okay. So while Rowan's reconnecting again, we'll uh, we'll just start penciling. This is a page of Cat and Mouse issue three that uh, should hopefully be on Kickstarter in about a couple months. Hopefully September. Uh, trying to get it out for y'all.
and this is page 18 so we're 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 almost there almost at the finish line What's up, Cody? What's up, Eric Dotson? Let's see. What's up, Mike Felcher? Ovin, what's up? Okay, here we go. Hear me. All right, I hear you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, we 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 uh, lost power and went totally into the dark that time. Yep. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> it 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 didn't just flicker. It went totally into dark. I'm going to see if I can uh, uh, pull up a really quick uh, uh, radar map. So show you. All, all those who are around me in Florida know exactly what's going on. Right. Oh, I see thunderstorm warning now. I'm sorry, tornado warning. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. So um, let's see. Can I share that? I want to share. Of course, my internet's still not back up to uh, full full speed here. Share screen. I'm going to share this just so everyone knows that this is why uh, why I'm, I'm I'm having these problems. Um, so you can see. Um, well, actually, the map's not coming on, but you can see we got. Uh, <laughs> Three, it looks like three tornado warning. Can you see that, Alex? Yeah, I see it a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it looks like the radar is not coming on. But uh, yeah, anyway, so uh, you know what? I can't promise that it won't happen again. Uh, hopefully it won't, though. Um, so there's that. So let me see if I can't get you, Alex, back up on uh, full screen. There we go. Uh, so before I start uh, quizzing you with all kinds of stuff, Alex, uh, tell us a little bit about what you're drawing, please. Um, so I kind of already told him already, but it is oh, okay. page 18 of Cat and Mouse issue three. Gotcha. Uh, oh, and it looks like there's some uh, co uh, comments here already. Cody Johnson says, hello, Alex. Yep. Ovin, uh, you already seen him? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, <laughs> welcome. Sorry about that. Uh, Owen, you probably, you, 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 close enough to me. You probably having, uh, some of this as well. Um, I do have my technicians trying to correct my, uh, the <laughs> name of my stream because it is not Silver Sunday. It is, uh, uh Silver Line one on one. Um, uh, okay, cool. So <laughs> I'm just going to start at the beginning, Alex. Uh, Go tell, tell me, uh, tell us, if you will. Uh, what what are the earliest memories of comic books that you have? Uh, going to our public library um, and grabbing a couple of volumes of JLA, I believe, and uh, some other volumes. I can't remember. I just remember the uh, early 2000s JLA run. I read a lot as a kid. Cool. Do you remember uh, the, the artist for that? Uh, I don't, but later I know it's like Howard Porter, uh, Howard Porter, and whatnot. And uh, it was with the uh, Martian Manhunter and uh, what's his name, Kyle Rayner as Green Lantern. And I'm trying to remember the writer. I'd have to look it up, but it, <laughs> I believe it was Howard Porter that was the artist. Gotcha, gotcha, cool. Um, now, did did those did those make uh, an impact with you, or is it just kind of some of the first you remember? Uh, it's just some of the first I remember. Um, I didn't really want to be a comic artist till later because I didn't think it was a natural job <laughs> uh, <laughs> until later. Um, yeah, but we can uh, probably still debate that, can't we? 
We could probably maybe. But <laughs> there are people that uh, support their families based on it. So yeah, oh, that's a job. Um, but yeah, so I, I was just kind of a fan. It was the way my parents got me into reading because I hate reading. <laughs> so. So I, I so we're we're not going to talk much tonight about uh, your favorite novels and stuff like that. Probably not. No, I could not <laughs> name one. <laughs> really? Nope. <laughs> so so I, so I have to ask you then how did uh, how did you manage to uh, sneak your way through high school without reading uh, some of the stuff? Uh, I read some of the stuff, but okay, you know enough but, to get me by. But nothing just really cried out to you that this is good and you should read more. I mean, there are there are some books here and there, but nothing like substantial. Nothing to yeah. keep me gripped. Huh? But so, yeah, it's always yeah. just been drawing. <laughs> well, that's that, that's good. So, so what's the uh, what's your first memory of of, uh, of drawing? When do you, when do you, did you pick up a pencil? Uh, the earliest I can remember was probably like four or five, just because mom was a she was trying to be a substitute art teacher or she mm -hmm. was a substitute art teacher and she wanted to be an art teacher so she had a bunch of supplies and so i would just pick up a piece of printer paper and draw random stuff and uh i remember one time i was uh indoor camping with my dad and we were drawing the uh, ninja turtles uh from the early 2000s cartoon not the original cartoon unfortunately but mm -hmm. just uh just drawn and uh, i would also not drawing, but it was just creative. I would, uh, not create, I guess, but I would take uh, colored paper from like FedEx whenever we'd go to like ship stuff. Right. And I would, uh, punch holes in them and like cut them out and make them into like Superman and Batman. <laughs> 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 so that they could like I'd just run around the house with those. <laughs> uh, uh, that's pretty funny. Um, now, so did did your obviously your, with your mom being an, an art teacher, um, we would assume art something she would encourage. Did she encourage specifically comic books? Not uh, specifically. I don't think uh, it was more just you know do what you want to do, sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, not until high school was it that I actually wanted to do comic books. Probably till I was like a junior in high school that I wanted really? to do comic books. So. Yeah, so it was always just drawing, and I, I was probably just going to go to an art college if I didn't want to do comics, so, yeah. Uh, you, I believe he cut out again, so let's, let's see. Just keep on drawing them. Let me see if I can pull up the Twitch to our YouTube. Let's see if there's any comments on that. Uh, thank you, Royal Airships, on... Uh, YouTube. Um, I don't know if I'm a pro, but I'm definitely enjoying drawing comics for Silverline. I'll try to keep up with the comments on Facebook and uh, YouTube. Um, or other ships. Uh, depends on the scene. If it was like a fight scene, I'd maybe change the lighting a specific panel but 
Uh, usually I try to keep a constant light source. What's up, Rowan? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for welcoming me back. Uh, yeah. Um, another, another big thunderclap. And, and this, you know, this time um, what happened, it just, you know how it just zaps your power just so that it flickers. Yeah. And that's what, ha that's what's happening now, but it's knocking out my, my modem and router so that it has to reboot everything. Gotcha. And so that was just a flicker. So, so you're talking about light sources there? Uh, yeah, it was just uh, Royal Air Sheps on YouTube was, was asking some questions and uh, giving me some some praise. I appreciate. Cool. And cool. Ovin, we're excited to uh, to get you issue three in your hands. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and and uh, so uh, remind me again. I just said this is page eighteen or nineteen. This is 18, and then I have 19 ready to okay, cool to start once we finish this one. So li literally only about four pages left to, to go after that one there. Correct. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead because the so the questions are – I have questions for you, but as long as questions show up for you on the stream, I'm going to ask those, and apparently you're seeing them too. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, yeah. which is probably a good thing because I, you know, I may be here for three minutes and then disappear again. Um, I, I, I pulled up the Facebook app and YouTube app. So I've been, okay, cool. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, Eric Dotson says, Alex, how much of your pencils end up on your hand? I'm left-handed and I used to smear my pencils early on. Um, this is my hand right now. It's, uh, <laughs> not very dirty. Um, I did the, just take a shower like an hour and a half ago but for the, uh, for the stream right uh yeah for the stream <laughs> and um i like it depends on the page obviously if it's like a super shaded page or dark page but i tend not to get too messy with my my hands just because uh the way i use the needed eraser that i have i usually take a uh -huh. lot out so I don't have to worry about that. But it yeah. is a problem for left hand. <laughs> Inking is a whole different issue. Though. I'll say yeah. That. Yeah. I, I, I've seen you uh, use that, excuse me, that needed eraser uh, frequently on the streams. Yes. It's so. probably my favorite tool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to show this real quick. Uh, this is where I am. This little button, this little pin here. Fortunately, hey, go, go stalk them. What's that? <laughs> I said go stalk them. Yeah, uh, it looks like all of the it looks like all of the um, storm clouds are fortunately moving away from us. So hopefully that's all all for now. Oh, it looks like there's a ring behind it, but we should be done <laughs> before uh, before the day. So. Um, all right, so let's get back to uh, back to your screen here, Alex. Um, Ovin asked, "How do you start an issue? Is there like notes, or do you read a script?" Well, I read a script uh, from this guy, Roland. He sends me one, and I create thumbnails. These, based on his script, and those get turned into finished pages. Now. Um... Now I've seen light boxes used before, but you don't use a light box, do you? Just give me one second. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. I have, yeah, so, I <laughs> so now, now, do you use the light box from for your thumbnails to um, uh, for your pages? Um, if my printer was working, I would probably print them out full size and then. <laughs> And go from there, but they aren't. So I've just been uh, doing them all on the boards. Oh, okay. So you're you're, you're eyeballing it from your um, from your thumbnails. Correct. That's cool. what I did earlier on this one. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh. Well. So let's let's uh, let, let's sit there for a minute. Do you feel that? Um, what are the pros and cons of that? Are, are there any benefits to? Um, Light boxing, or are there any benefits to just looking at your thumbnails and then kind of redoing it on a on a uh, on the Bristol board? So, if you're light boxing, it's definitely quicker. 
<laughs> yeah, okay. Um, just because yeah, all the shapes are there. And, and if you wanted to make changes, you could. Um, there are some like things like uh, on a couple pages in the past, in like the last couple, three pages, there's like little small changes I've made. Uh-huh. Just because I did these a while ago, so I'm trying to have to 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 read what I put down. Right. Um, and re- try to remember what I put down. <laughs> um, but... It, uh, there's pros and cons both, but if I had the choice, I would I'd definitely print them out full size and, and go from there. Yeah. Now, do you, um, you know, one of the things I always did as an editor uh, when we uh, would when we look at the thumbnails for approval, it, you know, a lot of, I mean, thumb, hold if you don't mind, hold your thumbnails back up there and you know, let us kind of look at them for a second. Actually, Here, can I'll, you, I'll, can you find that page? page? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So, so in looking at that, see, I, I, I see that and I, I've looked at enough thumbnails that, that, you know, I, I can kind of interpret them, but sometimes when you haven't seen them, you're like, okay, I know that's a head and a body, but I can't tell whose head and, and body that is. Yeah. One of the things that I would ask the artist to do is like, okay, look, put, put the initials of the character on their head, you know? Yeah. And, and, and so that, so that as I looked at the thumbnails, I could look at the script and say, okay, I can see what you're doing. Cool. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I, I, I love to look at thumbnails. Um, I've got some, actually, you'll probably, um, this is probably something that you'd want me to share with you, uh, Alex. I've got some uh, video from probably 80, probably 89 of Stephen Butler uh, working on thumbnails. Nice. Uh, and I think he was working on Badger thumbnails. I can't remember if it was that or... Um, Silverstorm, I, I can't remember, but I, I literally just kind of held the camera over his shoulder as he kind of uh, thumbnailed some stuff out and explained them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, so I'm I'm a big fan of that. Uh, it's definitely uh, a loose abstract kind of. It's just cool, you know, seeing how people do it. Uh huh. So now, so I, I'm going to go a step further on for Ovin's questions here. Um, but I see, I see, uh, Royal Airships has a question, so I'll get Correct. to you just just a second there. But um, so Owen asked about the the script. So there, there, there. Generally, there are two kinds of script in the comic book industry. Um, we we kind of refer to those as Marvel style and DC style. Um, Marvel and DC don't own them, but that's just kind of what we have a tendency to to call them. Uh, DC style is a full script very much like a movie script where Marvel is a plot that just says, Hey, this is happening on this page or these two pages. And then it's up to you, the artist to, to bring that to life. Um, now you and I work uh, page by page for cat and mouse. So I just, the plot just says, Hey, here's what's happening. You bring it to life. Talk about some, if you don't mind from the artist perspective, what are some pros and cons of that? What, what are some, what are some uh, what are some benefits that you see from it, and what are some of the uh, cons that you might see from from either of the two formats? So, uh, with going to the keyword school and, and working on a variety of different scripts and, and learning how to work on a script in the Marvel method, as you're saying, and a script that's super heavily detailed, there's definitely pros and cons to both. Uh, I think it depends on the artist you are and how strong you are with storytelling. If you can tell a story based on you know a paragraph of knowledge, right. or if you're drawing a script like The Killing Joke and there's about a page for one you know a page of scripts for <laughs> one panel, you know. It's, it's, so you've seen some Alan Moore scripts, then, huh? Oh yes, yeah, I've drawn them. So. <laughs> It's a, it, there, there's a difference, uh, definitely, you know, you have to, you feel like you have all these details you have to throw in or else the writer, although I'm not doing it for Al Moore, uh, you know, maybe they'd be upset, but the difference then if it's a paragraph is you want to make sure you're grasping that idea they had as closely as possible. Yeah. Now, um, you worked on a little of, of both at the Cuber School. Uh, mm-hmm. Were you surprised or were you not surprised when Cat and Mouse came your way and I, I asked if you were comfortable with Marvel style? 
I was a little surprised, but uh, I was comfortable with it, so I didn't yeah. mind. <laughs> yeah, and, and I explained to you why I, why I was comfortable with you doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty sure. Yeah, the, the, yeah, because well, number one, I'd seen your seen your work, and uh, number two, you know, I'd been familiar with the Cuber School enough to to know um, that they teach you guys those things. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, it's not something that that I'm I would be from you know, comfortable doing with with just anybody. Um. Royal, <laughs> okay. So Skyler says, "Yeah, I saw." <laughs> see, says, hey, "Do you see the little the 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 scrolling at the bottom? Do you see that?" Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Skyler says, "Hey, Alex, what do you have against TikTok?" Uh, I do not like TikTok. If you notice, <laughs> so it's it's not my humor. <laughs> you saw that I added that, right? Yeah, <laughs> I did that just for you. Uh, yeah. So, um, hey, Wubba, what's up? Uh, well, but you're going to get an e email from me in about an hour and a half. Um, awesome. Royal, or, yeah, or, I'll, I'll answer yeah. this question. Yeah. So he, he, he asks, says, are you uh, using, uh, yeah. stand? Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you, you can do it. it. <laughs> no, you can do it. <laughs> okay. He asked, are you using a standing desk or an architect table? Uh, I guess this would be an architect table. It's really just a drafting table. It's a very large drafting table. Uh, I don't have. I mean, I could. It could be a standing desk because it goes up pretty high. But I don't stand. I draw. I have a mm. larger oh, chair. Oh, I got you. So. But yeah, yeah. So do I, now. I will have to say, this is. I mean, it's not that I've never heard of it, but I am not aware of any comic book artists that use a standing table. Is is that something that you're you're aware of that the comic artists do mm -hmm. really? there are a couple uh comic artists that just want to relieve their back and uh kind of try a different method there are a bunch of drafting tables right now uh coming up on the market that have both options so if huh. you wanted to start the day standing and maybe you know lower it at a certain point you can right um this one's an older one so it can do both but i have never tried standing and drawing really. yeah I, I would imagine uh, I, I work retail, and uh, I work as a waiter. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I you know, I, I, I can't imagine standing and drawing the whole time. I'd be shifting, and you know, I'd want to pace. And, uh, yeah. Plus, I'd want to take my shoes off. I think, and I'm flat footed, so it it would be terrible for my feet. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, so, so how long have you had the table? Uh, I think I've had it for around two years. Okay. Take, so something you actually got while you were at Cubert then? Uh, no, it is way too heavy to be, uh, taken back and forth. The, the table I had at Cubert was just a Michael's drafting table, really cheap, just, you know, fake wood. <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah, something to get you through school, right? Yeah, this is like a metal, and it's 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 actually the drafting table Joe Cure did, uh, used. Really? I, ironically, yeah, we didn't actually pick it because of that. it was just something we found on Craigslist. Luckily. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, that's pretty cool. So let's go back to. <laughs> so so Skyler says, Lola wants to know what your favorite Silverline character to draw is and why. Actually, I'm, I'm curious to know that too. Um, I don't know yet. I Me, mean, <laughs> uh, I'd say the Silver Dollar. The way I want to do Silver Dollar yeah. is my new favorite character to draw. <laughs> we'll see if that ever happens. But yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So, uh, why? Uh, I just think it'd be a really cool character to create, and for the times right now, it would I think be really popular too. Very cool. Very cool. Hey, Tommy, what's up? Tommy says, uh, sorry he's late. What'd he miss? Um, Nothing much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you've missed you've missed me disconnecting because of the, the thunderstorms about three times, Tommy. Yep. Um, so, Tommy, if you got if you if you have some hard questions, uh, fire away. So, Alex, you said that um, when you were junior in high school is when you really got interested in, in drawing comic books, right? Mm -hmm. So what happened when you were junior that that made you say this is what i want to do <laughs> um well i was uh it was the summer in between 
uh, school years and we were taking a trip to New York and on the way we stopped in Tennessee and uh, my brother wanted to go to a comic shop. I don't know why he did. <laughs> and uh, so we went there I bought or read a comic in a while, probably at least like two, two years, something like that. Uh, two, three, maybe. And I uh, picked up a, a weekly book from DC and, and uh, just kind of got addicted to comics again. And I got, ended up leaving for New York with like probably like 20 issues that <laughs> I picked up on the way wow. back. So yeah, I became addicted really quickly. And I just, I went on YouTube and, and looked at all these different artists and tried to get as much information as possible. And so, yeah, I was hooked at that point. Wow. Now, did you find uh, did you find a lot of support around your classmates or? Uh... Um, I actually, you know, it was it's uh, I didn't get any backlash. Uh, yeah. Just because comic book movies are popular right now, so yeah. to draw comics isn't you know. Yeah, your high school is far, far different than my high school time. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> for sure. Uh, it probably would have been you know embashed a little bit more if yeah. it was your high school. Um, but uh, I never received anything, any criticism like that. But, and, but uh, you know, our classes that I did it, and they were they were all doing different things. So. Yeah. But now, also, I, I will have to say this: you're 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 a sizable fella. So uh, I was not in high school. I would say that. Oh, really? I uh, I probably didn't start growing to till probably like the end of my junior year. Really? But, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. was I was a little shorter. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, I was just gonna say now, you know, you're you, you're you're uh, of a size that uh, probably folks aren't going to be real anxious uh, to get on your bad side. I would, probably I not. would, yeah, probably <laughs> not. <laughs> um, so, what about uh, what about your family? Once uh, once you started expressing a lot of interest in in comics, I know you and I have talked, uh, you know, kind of privately and and and. Um, uh, I get maybe a little publicly uh, about the importance of family to to both of us, uh, but how did your family uh, react, and how did they kind of take your? I want to do comics, and when you were a junior in high school, um, I don't think I was that bold about it at that point. Beyond okay, just just wanting to draw more comics. Um, I can't really testify to that since it's been a long time, but sure. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I never really got anything like, hey, don't do that. I mean, uh, at one point in my senior year, I didn't think I was going to go to college beyond just community college. And then my mom was like, apply to Keyword School. That's the place you want to go. Let's try. So Wow. I've They've been super supportive, and I can't thank them enough. So. Yeah, very cool. Well, I, 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 if, if I may, I know that uh, when you told me that uh, uh, you were, um, when you had finished school, the way you got home. Uh, yeah, uh, I go to and from uh, Texas to New Jersey with my dad every time. Yeah, so, yeah. So you guys just kind of took a, a like a father son road trip. Yep, twenty five hour road trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, so so that's got to be pretty cool, huh? Now is is your is your dad a comic book fan? Uh, yeah, uh, he he was a big comic book fan. I have a bunch of his GI Joe comics from cool. uh, back in the day. That's where that uh, GI Joe number sixteen or whatever fifteen is from. It's from oh, okay. his, his collection, which uh, I have, which is pretty cool. And so, uh, so his collection is, is your collection now, right? Uh, from what he has left, yes. Okay, uh, gotcha. And then uh, he, the person, my middle name that I'm named after is uh, his uncle Chris, and uh, he was a huge. Uh, well, he still is a huge comic nerd, but uh, he kind of like got my dad into comics, so. Pretty very so, and this is your dad's cool. brother, all right? Uh, his uncle, so his uncle, okay, my great uncle, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, okay. Uh, so, so you're saying that your middle name is Chris, uh, Christopher, yes, very cool, very cool, very long uh, name. <laughs> so, so is your first name actually Alexander? Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so Alexander Christopher Gallimore, yep, <laughs> wow, yeah, multi, multi syllable, multi syllable, multi syllable, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
So, um, so I'm, I'm going to go there. So what, what about, uh, and I know she's listening, so, you know, you gotta be careful about what you say now. <laughs> what about, uh, what about Skylar? Is she, uh, is she kind of supportive about what you're doing or is she kind of like, dude, what's no, this? She's, com- she's, uh, she's been supportive. Uh, she's, uh, ever since we started dating, she's, uh, she's kind of been interested in what I was doing and what I wanted to do. And, She's always been there for me, so yeah. I'd say she's she's supportive. Yeah, she hasn't ever been like, when are you gonna when are you gonna you know when are you gonna grow up? Yeah, yeah, been like that. Uh, I mean, you know, this is one of those uh, the, those things that you know I kind of you know because she came out with you to uh, Daytona, and so we, we mm-hmm. got to hang out with her some there, and and so I, I kind of uh, really got the impression then that she was, uh, you know, she was one of your biggest cheerleaders, um, but. Um, but yeah, you know, sometimes, but you know, cause my wife will probably tell you, uh, there was a point in time for her where she was kind of like, all right, dude, you got to give this up now and <laughs> go do something. You know, I, yeah. I had done it for a bunch of years and, um, and then when Marvel, uh, downsized, I've, that's when I first, you know, that's when I actually started Silverline mm. 2.0 as a publisher and lost a lot of money. And that's kind of when she was like, all right, well th- that's enough. Let's, let's go do something real now. And, um, um, yeah, so, uh, but of course you, you, you have also met my wife, so you know that she's, mm-hmm. uh, super, super, uh, supportive of everything here, uh, that we're doing at, at Silverline. So I, I think it helps to have that, that support system with your family and, uh, you know, your significant other to, to kind of, um, encourage you on. Well, yeah, you wouldn't want to be, uh, you know, continually asked, what are you doing? Or like, why are you doing this? Or, you know, it's just not a productive, you know ecosystem to no. be so yeah. I mean it's al- it's already kind of um uh <laughs> kind of a lonely <laughs> kind of a lonely job is it it is because you know you sit there and you draw by yourself and mm-hmm. you know set writers do the same thing and, and all creators and uh, oh uh, uh Skyler says uh as long as long as Alex is happy and doing what he loves I'm happy and will always support him heart and you can't see me now, but I'm making a little heart with my tiny <laughs> fingers right <laughs> I see that I see that Oh, can you see me? No, no, I'm saying I see the comments. So. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I had to read them for everybody else because that's only yeah. on Facebook. So people yeah. on uh, on uh, YouTube, uh, and if we have any on Twitch, um, can't see them. So I have to read them for them. Uh, uh, also, yeah. Tommy, to answer Tommy's uh, question, a couple couple of questions back. Um, I ink the panel. Oh, okay. I, did, I missed that one. I saw him talking about starting over. Sorry, yeah. Tommy. I wasn't trying to, to skip you. Um, ahead, the Alex. reason I ink the panel borders is so if uh, just so I don't have to like if I erase something like with the needle eraser with uh, magic eraser or this boxy eraser that I have um, I don't have to redraw the line it's annoying and uh, I don't feel like redrawing and using a rule to redraw the line 10 15 times while I'm drawing the page so if I ink it it's there and if I need to go through it I have white out so Cool. That's why. That that good enough for you, Tommy? I'm gonna assume it is. Also, oh. I think it does help inking because you know exactly where the line is. <laughs> yeah. If it was just in pencil, it might be a little more difficult. Well, and also like uh, your top panel, top right panel there, uh, you have no panel borders, Correct. and and so that could possibly help the inker know. Well, yeah, don't don't put panel borders around that one. Yep, and some, sometimes you have, like you didn't, but I'm look, looking at the, the panel that you're penciling right now, and that panel could have, you could have left the panel border open where it, it doesn't touch her, mm-hmm. you know? And, yeah. and 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 by you inking it, you let the, the inker know, nope, I want this inked. Yep. Yeah. Um, very cool. So but what kind also- of... Go There's ahead. a rule usually, uh, obviously, if it's like a specific like kind of feeling you're trying to do where you have a page with no panel borders, but the golden rule is you only want at least one open panel. You don't want like multiple because it will like yeah. create some some worrisome issues. Yes, very, very worrisome issues. Very, very worrisome issues. So uh, you, now I'm going to ask this because uh, <laughs> Tommy says good yes. answer. <laughs> like the inker pays attention anyways. Um, so did you guys, um, 
Ed Kubert, did you guys uh, read Scott McCloud's book? Uh, not that I'm familiar with. Oh, the the uh, Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. Uh, yeah. Not sure. Oh, really? Well, you you should read that one, Alex. You, you would you would like it. You would enjoy it. It's uh it, it's uh it's a textbook in my class and. Um, it's not a how-to book, but it's it's more of a theory book. It's more of a this is kind of how the the gutters work. The gutters mm -hmm. do this for the reader and open. And he talks uh, in there about open panels and what they do and and how do you extend time in in uh, in comics and stuff like that. I think you would you would enjoy it very much. Um, uh, BJ says you're rocking that wristband, Alex. Yep, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Uh, and Skylar says, uh, what kind of pencil is your favorite? What's your favorite lead? Uh, right now. I mean, I don't have like a favorite pencil maker. I just like finishing with the F pencil. Um, just something I've found that I think it's like a little darker than the HB and it reads a little better. Okay. Another reason that. So do you go for, uh, I mean, you're, you, you talked about uh, kind of the way it looks. Is, uh, I know, I mean, and I don't draw, but I know just from, you know, writing with a pencil that they don't all feel the same when I'm writing on paper. Is there a feel that uh, that you like or don't like? or? Um, I, I, I think it all depends on the paper you're using. So I like a more toothier paper to kind of grip it mm -hmm. a little bit more. I, yeah. I've used smooth paper. I don't mind it that much. It's just a little more. It it kind of there's some there's some issues. That yeah, come up while you're using it. Um, but uh, I don't I don't ever find really the lead. Uh, like maybe with a if I never I never really use any bees just because I think it's a little too dark for comics. Gotcha. Unless I was inking, maybe I would use it to do some interesting shading. But uh, I only really use uh, 4H um, at HB sometimes to do some underdrawing and then the F. So, and then they needed eraser. That's about it. So. Gotcha. So, and, how many? Uh, to answer Tommy's question, I have tried uh, blue or so, red lead. Uh, yeah, okay. But I have found inking over it is uh, a little annoying for trying to erase <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. Now Tommy has inked. Uh, um, I know that uh, Tommy probably remembers this. Mitch Bird used to use a lot of blue, and um, I know that Tommy and I think Stephen talked about it at the time. Uh, they didn't like that. Um, they didn't like the the blue pencil because it left kind of a waxy mm -hmm. film, and it was yep. very very difficult to ink. Um, yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I know I know Mitch used to use it a lot for a lot of the the kind of the underdrawings like he, like you mentioned. Yeah, um, and I haven't seen a lot of people use red. Tommy mentions red, but I haven't seen a lot of people use red except for um, electronically. I've uh, I've seen some people do it when they're doing layouts on like a different sheet that they were maybe gonna light box, but uh -huh. I've never I haven't really seen anyone use red like on their actual finishes. But I've seen a lot of blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Skylar, Skylar says she loves the eraser and it makes the best desk snowman. <laughs> I do have, uh, Tommy, I do have some uh, some uh, lead holders that have blue and red uh, kind of lead, but I just don't use them. <laughs> yeah, the, for the non-waxy stuff? Yeah, that's what okay. he's, he's, he's commenting. Yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, so let's go back to um, uh, it, what what point in time um, did you decide? At what point in time did you decide I want to be a comic book artist? Um, I think if it wasn't in my junior year, it was probably in my senior year when I uh, was like super inspired by Greg Capullo. Okay. Um, just because that was my favorite artist back then, and, still is today. But. And, and you got to meet him, didn't you? Didn't you got to? Was he one of your teachers? Uh, he wasn't one of my teachers, but I did meet him, and he assigned a, a, a volume I have, um, which was really cool in New York Comic Con. Um, but uh, he's just always been my favorite. I think he's 
if he's not the best on the market right now, he's one of the best of the pen, like best pencilists, you know, best pencilers <laughs> yeah. on yeah. the market. And uh, he kind of inspired me to start actually doing pages. They were terrible in yeah. my senior year just because they were the first <laughs> pages I did. But I uh, that's when I started doing actual narrative pages. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, I, I always say you got to get the terrible pages out of the way before you get to the good ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, if if you don't, if you ne if you never do the terrible ones, you're not going to get to the the good ones. Uh, well, there's a bunch of terrible pages. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, that's that's just that's the way it is, right? You you, you got that's a, it's your process. Yep. Uh, Wubba says using blue, you need to ghost it with a gum eraser so you don't have the waxy feel to it. I'm not sure what he it means by uh, ghost it. What what is he what is he saying there? I'm not really sure. So okay, <laughs> uh, uh, I'll just stick to my uh, F pencils and uh, call it a day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so was there? So Greg Capullo. So was there? Um, when you decided this is what I want to do, how, did you announce this to your parents? This is this is what I want to go do, or did you just say I don't know? This is what I want to do, but I don't know how to do it. I was sort of like that. I I, uh, I was really just focusing on kind of figuring out how these comic artists got to do what they did. So I was listening to a lot of podcasts mm -hmm. uh, that they're on and a lot of uh, videos that they would produce. There wasn't as much. Now, I feel like if I was that age and uh, wanted to do that, I feel like it'd be a perfect time just since there's a bunch of creators that are streaming. And uh, I mean, Jim Lee does, you know, yeah, uh, he's done pages on stream in just a couple hours. So, for a young aspiring artist, that would be great to look at and just see what he does. Yeah, but I didn't really have that time, so right. I would just use what I had and and kind of use my already uh, fine art background and, and tried to do stuff. And uh, I didn't know I really wanted to go to the keyword school till like I say like October or November of my senior year, but it wasn't like a sure thing till like February or March. Wow. Okay. And, and, and was your, it was this a, was this a discussion that you had to have with your family or was it, you know, there were they like, yes, do it. Or, you know, it was a discussion I had to have my family. Yeah. And, Cause uh, I mean, New, New Jersey's a long way from Texas. It is. I, <laughs> That wasn't even the the really the the beginning of the conversation. It was just like, are you going to commit to this and, and actually do it? Yeah, so. gotcha. Yeah, but here in we other are. words, they didn't want you going and spending time uh, in school and then coming back and saying, "Well, I think I'm going to go be a waiter." Correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you you do what you got to do, but but yeah. I'm talking about no, career yeah. career choices. No, yeah, you wouldn't want to you want to want to go to art school and then come back and be like, "Well, I think I want to be an accountant." Right, you know, exactly. <laughs> let me go. To, let me go to you know, UT yeah. or UNT or right. Yeah, go spend another fifty k. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so talk a little bit about the, your experiences at the uh, at the Cuber School. Uh, yeah, Tommy's asking about the yeah. thumbnails. <laughs> hey, if you get here on time, Tommy, you'd see them. <laughs> uh, here you go. Here you go, Tommy. Here's the thumbnail for the page. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, so, so, so talk about your, your time at Cubert. Um, how, how many, how many were in your class? Um, to start in my first year, there were 36, I believe, or 37. Wow. Okay. And then at the end of it, I think there was 20, I think. So, so you had about, a about 17 drop out from start to finish. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. A three year period. Yeah, and, and what are what are semesters like? Are they traditional semesters? Um, yeah, I'd say so. That's uh, from it starts. Well, it kind of starts a little later. It starts at the day after Labor Day, mm -hmm. and uh, just because it's the New Jersey uh, school system, and then it ends the last week or like the second to last week of May. Um, there's a there's a winter break. There's a spring break at some point. It kind of like changed every year. And then uh, there was like a midwinter break and then like a small Thanksgiving break. Mm, so okay. It was, it, was, it was sort of traditional. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like it. Um, now, were there dorms? Uh, yes. 
Okay. Uh, um, they were okay. They <laughs> well, they, they're dorms, right? They, there was a roof over my head, so yeah. Oh, I think Roland just cut out again. Let's look at some of these questions. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so Tommy, these these were my thumbnails. Uh, before he was asking about if I used a light box at all um, to go from my thumbnails to a board. I don't because right now my printer doesn't work, but I probably would. I'd probably either tighten up them, blow them up. Um, right now I'm just going from these thumbnails and, and uh, doing the roughs and the finishes on the board. Uh, I do the thumbnails and Procreate, by the way. Um, and I just print them out and go from there. Uh, da, da, da. Well, but I don't think I've used enough blue pencil besides uh, traditional animation to, to really try that. Um, I might try it on uh, a commission in the future or um, with a cover, but uh, for something that I need an anchor to use, um, and she already turns into blue lines, might get a little um, lost. Um, but I guess if you're using it as a layout, it doesn't really matter, but um, I haven't had any issues with uh, lighting them up, lighting the pencils up and, and darkening them in Photoshop right now to uh, suffice blue pencil. Let's see, any other questions? Not right now, I'm just waiting for rolling. Also, Tommy, I uh, if you have any ideas for that the, that pinup we're going to do. Uh, just let me know. So I still haven't really done too much in the way of layouts for it. I was thinking of doing something like the uh, the uh, London Catacombs or something like that. Or uh, something along those lines. Oh, he's back. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> oh, are you still here? I'm still here. I'm still okay. here. I just... <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, if you could if you could have heard me once the the power went off, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. It's very fr very frustrating. So, uh, so I had just asked you about the dorms, mm -hmm. um, uh, and I see Royal Airships has asked you the differences um, between H's and B's. Did you answer those? I did not yet. Okay. Uh, um, let me just mess this up. So, uh, how much did I, how much did I miss about, um, about, uh, uh, Qbert? Um, I don't think I, I, as soon as I saw you left, I, I, I just started answering questions. Okay. Um, I'll answer Royal, Royal Airship's question. The difference between, uh, H and B's, uh, B's are going to be darker and have a little bit more, uh, rub to them. And H's are going to be a little bit more dense and have a lighter, reaction to the paper uh so f is hb is usually the middle and then f is like just above hb before the start of b's <clears throat> um i didn't Oven, know that his question uh he asked if you ever sneak in easter eggs into a scene or if i've ever asked to sneak something in uh and if he'll notice through you uh, um, I we have put an Easter egg. It wasn't really that big of an Easter egg in a page a couple pages ago. I think it was like page fifteen or sixteen. Mm -hmm. Um, but we haven't put that many Easter eggs. I do want to put more. Um, we'll we'll figure that out. Yeah. As we go. Um. Yeah. There are there are moments there. Um. Uh, the the answer to the, the question is yes. Um, the, do I do it frequently? The no. Um, one of the things that uh, one of the things I was able to do in the first volume of Cat and Mouse, there was a scene in which um, the characters were in their apartment, and there was a bookshelf on uh, in the background. And if if you go and look at uh, the books, you can read the titles. And a lot of them are 
other silver line books or books by my friends. Mm. <laughs> uh, those are the kind of things that, uh, that, that don't get noticed. Um, I, obviously, uh, one of the things that, um, Alex did for, uh, the Twilight Grim cover, there's some graffiti. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. Graffiti on the, yep. on the wall. That's, uh, Easter eggy. Um, and so, yeah, so yeah, I'll, they're, have they're... To, I'll have to post the full un, unedited graffiti at some point. Oh yeah. That would be cool. Um, yeah, the, it, uh, I mean, obviously it, it does what it's supposed to do when it's just colored because the focus is yeah. on the character, but yeah. it is, it is certainly a lot easier to see, uh, in, in black and white. Yeah. B yeah. Before, before the color is added. Um, so yeah. Um, let's see here. Go back to, um, all right. So. I think unless I missed them during the, my uh, unless I missed them during my power outage, I think I got all the questions. Um, so, so talk about uh, Kubert because uh, you know it's a it's very much a non traditional school, uh, and I'm not I'm not asking you to do the sales pitch for it, but it certainly is a very non traditional school in that you don't um, you don't go and you don't study you know science and math and um, um, literature or that kind of thing you you go and you learn to to tell sequential art uh, uh sequential stories um what were some of your what were some of your favorite classes and why um so there are 10 classes a week so it's sort of it's kind of like merged in between like a regular school experience and like a college experience because although you have 10 classes a week it is you know 1.5 hour credit classes each class so mm. it's a lot of work right and they it's kind of like a boot camp they say because if you get through it and you finish it you know that you want to do at least something in comics if all those you know the 17 people you know that left or 16 right. those people didn't really want to do comics because they didn't make it through right um or you know, they, you know, there's financial problems here and there, but sure. For the most part, those people uh, maybe didn't want it as much, uh, or you know, maybe they, they there's some people in the first year that just they didn't realize how much work it is uh, to do comics, and they want to do something else, so they back out. Um, what else? Uh, some of my favorite classes, obviously, like narrative art, um, just because you, I got to learn from Fernando and. Fernando Ruiz and Andy yeah. Kubert and Adam Kubert uh, all through the three years, uh, how to tell a story and all the different you know ways you can tell a story. And sort of like yeah. that book you were saying, basically that book, but uh, three years of that book. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe that's why I haven't read that book yet. Um, <laughs> but uh, besides that, maybe like uh, I'm trying to think of a, you know, like the digital production classes were really key just because I, before that, maybe used Photoshop for a total of maybe two days wow. worth of, of hours just because yeah. I just never really used it. It wasn't something I did, just mainly paper and watercolor to color. So right. that was a, a huge class for me just to learn how to, to color comics and just color digitally at all. Yeah. Um, another class that was really uh, fun was uh the human figure which is that's what's called the school which is right. basically just uh they have a live model come in and and you get to draw a bunch of different body types yeah um because it is you know a college course technically so sure uh everyone's above the age of 18 and uh you have to be <laughs> yeah. you have so, to be a little so more are you serious. saying you had, you had nude models there huh yes every yeah. week <laughs> every week for uh every week we're at the school um, so you get to, you know, the fun part about it is you get to draw all these different body types and all these different poses that you might never normally just draw. So right. it's a little bit more comfortable of drawing the normal human body. Yeah. Yeah. So what were some of your, uh, and, and, and obviously we don't want to name names, but, uh, what were some of your, uh, least favorite classes? What, 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 what class or two did you have that you just went, Oh, got to go to this class again i can't wait to get through it 
Um, it probably wasn't, none of these were like the fault, just good teacher, but uh, like uh, animation my first year, I'd already done animation in high school and that was something I wanted to do before I decided I wanted to do comics. Um, and I just decided it, it just wasn't for me. It wasn't fun. It kind of just annoying to me and I didn't really find any passion in it. So having yeah. to go through it another year um, was kind of boring to me. I, the teacher was awesome yeah. and he has done a bunch of actual animations in uh, for Warner brothers and all these different companies. And so it was really cool. And he was a really cool guy. Just doing that type of uh, work just, doesn't interest me so it was a little, a little bit about of a bummer to have to do that again but yeah um still it was on a friday so it wasn't that bad um <laughs> but then again i'm complaining about drawing so we'll you know what can, what can i say right. um it's, it, it's, class. It, it's hard to find people to feel sorry for you right yeah yeah <laughs> uh maybe another one just because again I, I had done it so much was maybe basic drawing mm. uh just because a lot of it was perspective heavy and oh, okay. uh, going through the classes I went through, through high school and, and middle school and whatnot, I had already kind of learned the basics of perspective. And mm -hmm. It was still uh, another chance to just to draw more. So I would experiment a little bit more with stuff and more characters and whatnot. Yeah. But, uh, but again, the teachers were awesome. And like Jan Durismo was one of my busy yeah. drawing teachers and she's, you know, one of my shoes, my favorite teacher at the school. Cool. So, um, it still was worth it to go. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, so what, what do you think, uh, looking back on it now, having, you know, been a, your, your year, uh, from graduation, what, uh, what do you think were some of the, the, the greatest things you, you got from school? Um, well, one thing is it, forced you to draw every day yeah. <laughs> um yeah, i think if i didn't go to school if i just tried to do it all on my own and, and be self-made i might i might get to this point at yeah. some point but it would not be at 20 21 or 22 years old yeah. it would be uh you know like i'd be 25 or 26 or something because you're never going to push yourself to do that unless you have uh like people around you telling you to do you know you right. have this do at this day you know 10 different classes all you know 10 <laughs> due dates do you, you you know there's only seven days a week so you're drawing every day so <laughs> i think if i didn't have that i would never be at this this level that i'm at yeah um and there's still room to grow so you should always be growing yep, uh, as an artist i agree so i'd say what, what was i saying what was the question? It was uh, the, what? What do you think you 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 got? What was the thing you got the most from the school? Yeah, I think uh, so. Yeah, drawing every day and um, learning how to kind of pace yourself, and you have all these different projects and how to manage them all. You know, right? Oh, now that's I have good. Some commissions I have to finish this issue, and uh, you know, I want to do some samples here and there, and but you know, you got some stuff to pile up, but you got to figure out how to you know manage that. Plus, I work at a different job. Yeah. So you have to manage your time and you know, you have family, you have a girlfriend and yeah, you, you have to manage it all. So that's right. That's something that, like a, uh, the school taught me. Yes. That's cool. <laughs> and that's, and that's cool. That the, the school teaches you that. Yeah. Cause um, you have to, cause either not, then you, you just, you're one of those 16 people <laughs> didn't make yeah. it because yeah. there's the, the classes don't stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's one of the things that uh, I've kind of enjoyed hearing from you um, is that it seems like they're very realistic about um, the world of comics. They're, they're not trying to sell you a dream as as much as they're trying to say, okay, this is really what it's like. No, yeah, and even at, I, I would be at the open houses um, to help them kind of like generate people, and they would tell us that, don't sugarcoat the idea of the school. Like the idea of the school is it's it, you know, you are here because you want to draw comics and we're going to yeah. teach you how to draw comics. It might not be the most, you know, uh, you, you won't be partying every week. You won't be, you go into a frat party be <laughs> at your dorm or at your desk drawing because that's what you got to do. Uh, you might get a night off here and there, like somehow. Um, but, for the most part, you're going to be drawing. And uh, if that's what you want to do, come to the school. 
it's not okay. There are a bunch of other schools you can go to, a yeah. bunch of different art schools. If you don't want to draw comics, you can go to, you know, you can go to Full Sail and uh, <laughs> yeah. art classes and, and uh, <laughs> you know, ways around that. So also, yeah. if you don't want to live in Jersey, you know, there's a bunch of art schools around the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, living in Jersey would probably be the biggest uh, uh, stumbling block for, for for me personally. You know, um, the work doesn't scare me. I've worked my whole life, but the the, the living in Jersey, I'm not sure that's uh, uh, that'd be tough for me. Uh, beyond the potholes, it was it was a great it was a great little state. <laughs> the, the potholes are the, are the worst the worst part for me. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you you had you you had a car while you were up there yes correct yeah, yeah. uh so what what was the uh is there anything that uh you know looking back now a year removed from it, is there anything you're you look at the school and say you know i kind of wish they had had done a little bit more of this or i kind of wish i had learned about this in school that they didn't teach um i think that they hit a lot of the bases um like uh mainly you, you kind of learn how to make like if you really just wanted to go the first year you could because you learn how to do everything the first year mm -hmm. uh from traditionally lettering to how to put a page together obviously you're not going to be a superstar at the age of 19 after one year if you go straight out of college but say you're you know maybe you're been drawing for a long time and you just want to learn how to draw comics and you're like 30 or something yeah you could you might be able to just go in and, and do that first year and catapult yourself a little bit into yeah. uh making your own comic um i'm trying to think uh i don't know if there's like anything i'd want them to do more okay um beyond uh maybe just more narrative pages Although do you already do a lot of narrative pages? Yeah, so. I was gonna say. So you want you want them to assign you more narrative pages? <laughs> um, there, there's never too many narrative pages, uh, especially <laughs> if you're a young uh, aspiring artist trying to learn more. I, but I, I uh, agree. Um, you do learn a lot of uh, the different types of scripts and whatnot. So, I mean, it's really up to what you want to do. But they they have a well balanced breakfast over there for you to to work on every day. So. Yeah. Now, did did they have uh were, were there were there goalposts for you? Did they they did they want you to to produce so many pages a week or uh, can you re, do you recall that? Were you doing three pages a week or what? Uh, there was never like a goalpost. Like each class was a little different. Um, so like my first year, I was probably only for like the first semester, I was only doing narrative pages mainly for narrative class. So maybe you'd only do like one page a week. Um, okay, but you do like pinups and, and other stuff and other classes and ink right. something or uh, production on something else or and whatnot. But uh, like as the the years went by, you know, the third year you're probably doing like three pages a week or four maybe. Um, second year, you know, you might be doing two or three, maybe four uh, a week, just depending on the on the workload. Um, but yeah, so it can get pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which can you know uh, uh, kind of replicate uh, the, the real world, right? Yeah, because like you said earlier, you know, there, there's always the challenge of uh, balancing, you know, uh, a family, girlfriend, job that pays the bills, and job that you're trying to do to to get into what you want to do, and yep. and all of those require uh, require require time and attention, and there's all the balance. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm glad to hear that, uh, that that they cover that. I think in looking back at my own uh, college degree, um, the one thing I was real disappointed in my bachelor's program is is they didn't teach us anything about the business of writing. Um, gotcha. You know, they taught us here's here's how you write, here's a plot, here's character, here's all this kind of stuff. But then they just you know you're graduated, they're like, hey, great job, you know how to write now, and it's like, well, now what do I do? You know, they there was never anything about, uh, you know, rights or or, um, you know, contracts or, yep. you know, negotiations or any, you know, markets or se selling or agents or, you know, nothing like yeah. that. 
Oh, yeah, in our third year, we had a business of comic art class. So Yeah, that's great. We, who thought, we even, who thought that? Uh, it was just uh, at, at first it was um, – trying to remember who taught it first. But uh, it ended up being kind of like the, the person who ran all the classes and, and scheduled them all. His name is Mike Chen, and uh, he's, he's done a bunch of work uh, here and there. But he was one of the first graduating years of the Keyword School. So he's been in the Chen? business. Uh, Mike Chen. Mike Chen, okay, yeah. Mike Chen, yeah. He's a great, great yeah. guy. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And that's one of the things I, I've always enjoyed about the the Cuber School. When I hear someone talk, they mention my teacher was, you know, this person. I'm like, I know who that is. You know, I I, I know these artists. Yeah. Um, and I think that's I think that's fantastic to be taught. Uh, you by. know who Andy Cubert is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I met Adam and Andy both briefly. Um, but, uh, you know, I've, I've told you my Joe, my Joe story, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and of course Joe did work for, for Malibu. So I was able to you know, actually, you know, talk with him a little bit, but, um, as far as Adam and Andy, no, I, I don't, you know, I, I met them, but it was just a very, very kind of brief meeting. Um, yeah, but I, 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 I still, they're, um, they're Adam strange book together still, phenomenal piece i actually have that so yeah. do you really <laughs> i do <laughs> yeah it's it's uh, it's it's a great work i always thought it was kind of cool that they uh, both kind of inked and penciled each other on the different issues thought that was uh, really cool uh me too i always, and, I always thought uh, that was very cool me and uh thomas hedgelin have talked about doing something similar if our uh schedules ever open up really yep that could be cool that could be cool. He's got to. He's got to recall those balancing uh, classes, though. I think at this point in time, <laughs> <laughs> he's got him a new girlfriend. So, uh, well, not. Yeah, he, he, I don't know if he had an old one, but he's got a girlfriend. Is what I should say. Yeah. He's he's got to figure that out, but uh, yeah. He he he's uh, he wants to do it. So I think yeah. if he wants to do it, he'll yep. uh, he'll make time. Yep, and he's got the chops. You know, he's doing he's doing great stuff on Trumps. Oh yeah, his, his work is phenomenal. He was actually yeah. my uh, my first year, my first class. So uh, I've known him since the beginning. Oh, very cool. So 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 when you say he was in your first class, at the beginning was he not in all the other classes? Uh, well, he he had to to leave to oh for gotcha. financial reasons, and then he gotcha. came back uh, our third year. But he was in my first class, uh, my first year. Uh, class i think it's one b yeah. or whatever so did you tell me he was your, your roommate for a while as well uh he wasn't my roommate um but uh i, I call a bunch of people my roommates just because i would i would hang out with them my third year <laughs> yeah, I, yeah okay. I would hang out with him a lot um so. <laughs> got it yeah we were never yeah. actually in the same room though yeah. but you were kind of uh in the, you were in the same dorm so you hung out together right yeah yeah uh no yeah i i agree i think uh i think he's doing some some phenomenal work on uh on Trump. Yeah, Tommy says Trumps. Uh, yeah, uh, Trumps is, is looking to be the premier silver line, silver line book here. Yeah, it, it's looking it's looking really good, and and Hedgelin's uh, I, I think he's doing a, a great job. Um, so I'm I'm really excited to um, uh, see him kind of finish that one up. He's also talked about doing some um, some more design work, which I think he 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 may be a little bit interested in. So I want to have to follow up with him and say, all right, let's get these pages done, and then let's talk about the design stuff. Um, and maybe that will, will kind of encourage him to uh, have girlfriends sit at his knee while he draws. Well, maybe we can uh, get him to do some uh, those uh, playing cards. Yep, yep. That's uh, that's kind of what I'm. That's kind of where I want to go with it after. But I, I need him to finish the book first, and then we can do <laughs> you know, and then we can do the other stuff. Um, because you know, playing cards don't matter without a book. Um, so, but no, he, he's doing a great job, and I and I think he's. Um, uh, I think he's uh, working on. Uh, well, last time we swapped some notes, he's he's uh, um, working on getting himself on a schedule. So um, so yeah, I'm excited about that. Um, so so if you could if you could do uh, any book right now, you know uh, what would it be? Uh, Demon Tales. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let me let me revise the question then. I appreciate that, and that's really good for my ego. Um, well, well, I know the story, so I, I yes. don't want to do that story. Well, that's cool. I'm glad to hear that. 
Um, so if you could choose, let me let me revise my question then. If you could choose a Marvel DC book, um, if if Marvel or DC came to you right now and said, "Hey, you know, we want you to uh, pencil a book. What what book do you want to draw? What uh, pick hmm. one one at Marvel, one at DC, and uh, and, and tell me why." Uh, I think at at Marvel would probably be Venom, um, just because the Donny Cates is the writer right now. Okay. And, um, he grew up in Irving, Texas, which is about an hour out from where I'm at, and uh, I love his stuff. Uh, he writes Thor and Venom, so I guess either or. Um, at some point, I do want to work with him. He's just it seems he's a really good writer and he's a cool guy. So. Um, so, so it's more about uh, it's more about working with Donny Cates rather than working on on Venom, right? Yeah, no. Okay, I, sure. Personally, um, it doesn't really matter to me what character I'm drawing. Um, it really matters like how like the story is, you know, and how that uh, that I want to draw it. So that's mm -hmm. why I said Demon Tales because I know it happens. So I want to I want to <laughs> make that happen. I want to draw that. Cool. Um, for DC, I love DC. So. I can't really choose one off the top of my head, to be honest. Uh, obviously, everyone wants to be like, oh, I want to draw Batman. Um, yeah, yeah, everybody wants to draw Batman. Um, I might want to draw Batman, but it's a lot of pressure to draw Batman. Uh, yeah. The Batman book. You're always going to be compared to top Batman artist X, you know? Yep. Uh, who, whoever, whoever talks to you, whoever their favorite Batman artist is, you're going to be compared to them. Yep, and I would probably just be comparing my work to Great Pool the whole time. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things going uh, that used to always go around is you never want to follow um, uh, someone on a great run. So yep. you know, you don't want to follow some somebody like Jim Lee, right? Yep. Uh, you don't want to follow a John Byrne, and for you, you you don't want to follow a Greg Capullo or a Neil uh, Adams or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah you you want to you want to follow the guy that follows them. Yeah, <laughs> because you know the the expectations that there's this this person that everyone loves, and then whoever comes next is never going to match up. Yeah, so you can be the person that fo that follows that person. Hey, if you are <laughs> the person running up, you get you better just yeah you know, give it your all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, so what about music? What, does does music play a, a a part in your? I know that we're going to talk about music uh, on on Wednesday, um, but uh, just in general, does music play a part in in your life? It does. Uh, if I wasn't on street right now, I'd probably be listening to music. Cool. Um, it uh, it helps me kind of focus and then mm -hmm. just kind of just go to town. Um, I just then been listening to music while I draw for a long time I, I can't really place it when i started just something i like to do uh, i like listening to music though so um i've tried doing podcasts it depends on the podcast but uh those can work sometimes but if i'm like watching a tv show that i haven't watched or a movie i haven't watched it doesn't really work for me because i want to pay attention to that um, <laughs> <clears throat> but like if it's the office which i've watched a thousand times then i can play that in the background and, and still laugh at it because i know exactly what's happening um, right but other than that it's usually just listen to music um and i know we're talking about that wednesday but uh, yeah well, we're I, talking about you tonight so yeah yeah and, uh, <laughs> i pretty much listen to everything except country um I listen to some country, but it's just not my uh, my my favorite thing to listen to. Right. Now, uh, do do your parents listen to music? Uh, yes, yeah. uh, my dad is a huge uh, huge uh, rock fan. So really, okay, yeah. Uh, now, now, would you say that um, his musical taste influenced yours, or? Um, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't say that at all. Okay. Um, I listen to mainly more like rap and R and B. Uh, okay, so it's not really the same at all. It sort of <laughs> yeah. originated from rock in a way, but right. But uh, I mean, I do like uh, like Foo Fighters and uh, a couple of rock bands here and there. Yeah, and like you know, uh, just just a couple here and there. Um, I can listen to rock music, but he has. Deeper knowledge and uh, and and enjoys it a little bit more than I do, um, but for me it's more rap and R and B. That's that's where I like listen to. 
it might just be because that's uh, you know my generation showing through. yeah yeah and that, do, do you um do you find that you want to listen to music that um might set a tone for you and what you're drawing uh not particularly not really um i did like listen to like uh movie soundtracks a lot too uh, yeah I, I don't know why but they kind of like especially at movies i've seen and um just because like it i don't know why it just it's something i like to listen to sometimes uh kind of kind of recalls the movie a little bit for me sure yeah yeah, and and um, I mean, if you've seen the movie enough times, then then you can actually visualize what's happening yep. when you hear the sound. Yeah, uh, you ever seen Flash Gordon? I have, I think once or yeah. twice. Yeah, um, it's one of my all-time favorite movies. I just watched it. Uh, I think this past week with my son, and uh, that's a soundtrack that I used to listen to frequently. You and, know where I first heard that song, right? Uh, I heard uh, the main title song. Flash Gordon? Yeah, Flash, I uh. heard that from Blades of Glory. <laughs> really? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, uh, so, do, so do you watch a lot of movies, a lot, a lot of TV? Yes, lots of movies and TV. I'm a what? huge... I just love movies and TV. I don't watch it, like, I don't watch, uh, like, concurrent movie and TVs. Like, I, I'll watch, you know, if it's like I just watched King of Staten Island, uh, which is the, probably the most recent movie to come out. Um, but uh, I think I saw that on Amazon. Yeah, I'll just scroll through Netflix or something and, and find a uh, comedy I want to watch. Yeah. So is that your preferred uh, genre? Uh, yeah, I'd say comedy is probably my preferred. Um, I feel like there's just usually there's uh, some some good movies there and you know it's not too serious. Uh -huh. uh, I was never really a big horror fan growing up. Kind of uh, saw a horror movie too too early for myself, and uh, kind of scared me out of the genre. <laughs> um, yeah. Now, uh, now was this with or without parent parental approval? Uh, I don't think it was with parental approval <laughs> um, because it was at my sister's. Like they were, they were. She had like uh, a bunch of her friends over, and they were watching it. And, uh, so maybe they had parental approval. I don't know. I mean, it was just it was just signs. Um, okay, yeah. So uh, I think I was like maybe five, and just it scarred me. Yeah, as a kid. So. <laughs> uh, I think I, I think I remember uh, you and Skylar, my wife, talked a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, Tony, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't watch. Uh, she can't watch uh, horror at all for the. the I don't know if she was scarred or not, but I know that she she uh, her problem is that if she watches one, those images get in in her brain, and then she can't sleep at night. Gotcha. You know, and it's not even that for me. It's just uh, the suspense in a movie is mm -hmm. what gets me. It's not even like the jump scares really scare me or anything. It's really like the build up of the scene, which is sort of what they're trying to do. Um, yeah, yeah. But that's always just what gets me in the. Uh, there was, there's always, uh, if you ever talked to Jose or, uh, one of my other roommates, we went and saw it, uh, the first <laughs> one together. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, that was quite an experience for them. <laughs> Did you scream like a girl? Oh no, I didn't scream. I was just, uh, covering my eyes. And, uh, oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Trying to, to ball up and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. I uh, got a couple folks on uh, Twitch saying hello. I don't, the, you know, Twitch handles are weird, so I'm not sure uh, if these are legit. One of them is uh, Naho V says uh, hello. That's cool. The other one is uh, Slammer Moo uh, says hey. And Tommy says uh, McFarlane, Larson, Bagley. I'm not sure. I think he's talking about his influences. Oh, maybe. his influences. Um, I love McFarlane stuff. Um, not sure, not so sure about Eric Larson. Um, yeah, personally, uh, and uh, I know the the way Mark Bagley has drawn Spider Man is it's a big favor to a bunch of people. Uh -huh. um, but as a surprise to a bunch of people, and, and Thomas Hedlund uh, included, I'm not really a big fan of of uh, Bagley stuff. I see the merit in it, but uh, yeah. I just 
personally don't. It's not my cup of tea. Um, I've but, never been uh, a big so Bagley fan either. Both both Tommies, you gotta you gotta ignite the Bagley uh, bandwagon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they actually surprised me that uh, Tommy List, uh, McFarlane, and Larson is. Uh, these 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 may not be his. Oh, great runs at five. Okay, yeah, yeah. He's ta Josh. talking about when we talked about you don't want to follow an artist that. Fo yeah, he's talking about uh, great run on Spider Man uh, that followed uh, each other. Yeah, Tommy's a big Spider Man fan, so um, yeah. Well, I after don't know. McFarlane came Larson, came Bagley, and yeah. I don't know if uh, right after. Did Larson do it right after McFarlane I, left? I think he did, yeah. Because didn't he also do his own image book? Yeah, yeah. The, but that was that was uh so so McFarlane did Spider Man. Yeah. And then left that title to get his own title. Yep. And and so Larson came and and drew after, amazing. After he rebranded Spider Man to yes. his own title. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's a, that's a pretty good move, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, think about like how like instrumental those guys were, and like how like they built that uh, market up, like the Image guys, uh, so like rapidly with uh, like X Men and you know Spider Man yeah. and X Force and whatnot, like the sales they they kind of pushed, and then oh, with dude. The Image, Tom, Tommy and I lived that. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> you know. Um, I can only see that stuff, you know, yeah. from you know networks and whatnot. And I tell you, those are some really good. There's some really good um, um, uh, documentaries to watch. Um, I, I watched one the other day, uh, well, a couple of weeks ago, on Amazon. I think um, Image something. Uh, but there's another there's another one on YouTube that's that, that's uh, that's pretty good. And and I, you know, I think one of the things you have to do, kind of like like kind of like history. Uh, although I wish more people would do this today with history, kind of like history, you, you have to look at a lot of this stuff, not just one little tiny little thing, and said, and to interpret it right. Um, but if you kind of put some of these these a lot of these image documentaries together, you get the you get the picture of uh, of what was happening, and and it was a really exciting a really exciting time in comics. I mean, um, yeah. those those guys, you know, that, that was that was that was pretty awesome, and. Well, they they, uh, they bet on themselves and they they won to it. Yeah. So. Yep. A absolutely. Uh, Wubba says, "Yeah, no no fault there. He's not a big Bagley fan either, unless he's being inked by uh, Art Bear. Yep. Um, and uh, Eric Dodson says, "The great '90s." <laughs> um, yeah, you know, having having been around that time, it's 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 one of those kind of an, and maybe Floramonte can uh, back me up here. It's one of those times where you just kind of look back on and say, you know, there was a lot of money in comics in the early nineties. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of money and yeah. it did not last very long though. <laughs> well, yeah, you know? It was, uh, yeah. it was just the huge speculator boom. Yep. People thinking they can, they can buy X-Men five times and in two years they can make, you know, yeah. bank on it. When uh, I think four years ago, I bought all four or five issues of that number one for I think five dollars together. So. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah. It's because there's so many copies. I mean, that, part yeah. of what makes copies valuable is that they're rare. And you know, the death of Superman, I think, had a, a five million print run. Mm -hmm. uh, I bet you, I bet you, somewhere, somewhere in America, someone used X Men number one as toilet paper during <laughs> COVID. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's kind of one of those things. Like, I don't know whether I want to know if that's true or not. <laughs> I bet you it's true, because you know someone has like ten copies of each uh, version of the variant somewhere. Listen, dude, no, no, no. You know somebody's got boxes of yeah. those. Yeah, uh, it's toilet paper at this point. Yeah. It's, yep. And it's the older paper, so it's a little you know thinner. So <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have so, any. You know, wax on it at all. <laughs> so what you're saying it's softer on the uh on the on the flesh? Yeah. So <laughs> I could totally see someone with just boxes and maybe they're even damaged now because of water damage. They're just like, you know, whatever. Can't find toilet paper. So <laughs> this is what I gotta do. Yeah. Fortunately we're we've got uh I think all of our stores uh, have toilet paper uh stocked again. Um 
So Tommy Wubba, Eric, you guys got any uh, got any other questions? Yeah, a lot of universes were born. Eric says, uh, and yeah, it's absolutely. The the early '90s was a time when uh, everybody was launching a universe. You know, uh, obviously, I, you know, I worked for Malibu, and it was the uh, uh, the Ultraverse. Of course, at first it was the Protectors, and then and then because of Image, uh, the spotlight that went to Ultraverse, and of course, then you know, Dark Horse had theirs. I forget uh, what it's called. Um, yeah, Wubba says it'd be really slick toilet paper. Um, okay, yeah, here's a good question from Royal Airships. He says, uh, Do you have a favorite detail to draw? Do you like drawing a, a scar, a tattoo, or a hairstyle? Uh, not particular, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> I uh, I, I, I don't know. Oh, well, do. So, let me let me uh, let me add a, a second part to, to his question Is there um, is there something that you cannot stand drawing? Uh, um, not really. I mean, like, yeah, of course there's, there's things people don't like to draw. Like I don't like to draw architecture. Um, like I do and I don't just cause I was going to say really, cause that church scene in, uh, issue two was the, 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 the establishing yeah. shot of that church was awesome, dude. See, and that's, that's, that's the double, the double sword there. Like I, I, I want to draw it and I want to make <laughs> it look good, but also halfway through it, I'm like, oh, now I got it continue drawing this, <laughs> this exact way and i can't shortcut it because i've drawn it already halfway through so i do that with a lot of things though uh and and how i draw comics uh so i kind of create problems for myself so what once you commit you can't just pull back and say no i'm just gonna put a line there yeah i, I, I most of the time uh, i just i bite off too much for me to chew i guess uh, so. uh but you know, if it helps in the the end product, so be it. So. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's, let's kind of let's turn back to, to movies for a minute. So what's uh, so we know you like comedy. So what's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite movie? Or, or, or maybe we, we don't say your favorite. What's your what would you say are, are top five movies for you that uh, you've got you've got two hours that uh, you want to just chill and and you're gonna put on a movie, but you don't want to watch something new. You want to watch something you've seen before. What are, the, what are the top five that are on your list? Um, trying to think. You put me on the spot here. <laughs> I five told you movies. I would. Um, <laughs> movies that I enjoy. Well, Baby Driver is one. Although oh. probably right now is probably the best answer to say. Uh, with everything going on on Twitter and whatnot. Yeah. But I really enjoyed that movie. Um I probably watched it way more than I should have. Um, Baby Driver, huh? Baby Driver. Uh, I don't think I've ever even seen it. It's, it's a really good action movie. It's by uh, uh, what's his name? See, yeah, you know, this, this, this is why you don't put me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. Tommy hates it when I do that to him too. Uh, I can't. I can't remember the director's name right now, off the top of my head. But uh, so that's one of the Baby Driver. Okay, Let's Baby Driver. Um. Into the Spider Verse is another movie I've oh. watched a lot. Yeah, that's uh, a good one. Yeah, and not that it's on my top five, but the main voice actor in that movie is Shamik Moore. I loved the movie he was in called Dope, um, which was really, which was a really good movie. Probably watched it a couple times on Netflix when it was there. Um, I really like the Creed movies. Oh yeah, those are the, good. The, the recent ones. Uh -huh. I've watched Creed two on Hulu. I think now three times just because. I just think it's great from yeah. like uh, the middle fight where everything seems a little bit off to even when he's, you know, entering the ring, he he's off with the music, with the, the beat of the music when he hits the glove, just kind of sets the tone. Um, <sighs> trying to think of some, some older movies. Blade Runner is, oh, yeah. uh, is a great a movie. One. You do mean the original, right? Um, yes. Yeah. I actually haven't seen the the new one, although I do want to. I just haven't gotten around to it. Yeah. It came out when I was in school. Um, Winter Soldier was oh. uh, the the second cat movie. Was I probably? I think I saw that the first time I saw it. I saw it with my friend, and then the next day I saw it with my parents. So <laughs> <laughs> it. Uh, I, I just love that movie. And, yeah, it's a good movie. Uh, and and being a comic fan and not knowing 
the actual story of Winter Soldier and getting to experience it in theaters for the first time was really cool. Yeah. Um, Because a lot, you know, like the Justice League movie that came out that was terrible. (laughs) um, Yeah. I already knew most of the stuff they were trying to riff off. And so it kind of, it, it, ruined the experience for me a little bit. And yeah. uh, I think I had too much expectations for that movie for myself to enjoy it. Whereas into the spider verse, I know a lot of that material and they did it really well. They, they gave it justice. Yeah. And that shows you the difference in between those two movies. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Why, why one's good and one, why one's bad. <laughs> Well, I think I, 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 and I agree with you. I think I probably uh, told you this before, but you know, my friend Barry, uh, Barry Gregory, who was one of the partners at uh, Kablam, mm-hmm. um, ha- says, you know, and of course he's a, he's he's more of a DC fan than I am, and um, you know, he he has said before that he thinks the problem with the the DC movies is that the directors that they're getting to do the movies don't like the original content. Um, they're like, why don't they get someone to do a Superman movie that actually likes Superman? He <laughs> says, but what what happens is, is it looks like that they're they're trying to tell a movie that's not Superman. They're not embracing who Superman is. Yeah. You Although know? I do I do love Man of Steel, um, as a movie as a, like its own thing. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Obviously, bad movie Superman's a whole different direction. Um, right. Because they're trying to achieve something that isn't really the tone of Superman. Uh, Because they're kind of breaking the character to uh, to kind of go with the uh, script of the movie, whereas staying true to the character. Um, I do. I just I thought Man of Steel was was really good and kind of created that hope behind them. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they kind of made it a little bit duller than the Christopher Reeve Superman, which was a little bit more hardy, you know. Right. But uh, I think. I think the problem with the directors these days, they might be a fan of the books, but I think they're trying too hard to make it not like the books. Yeah. The content that they maybe go too far and they, they take elements from the characters that are, you know, like they're important to the characters like genes, like Superman, like he's supposed to be, hopefully he's supposed to be this figure of just, you know, perfection. And I feel like the, where they take that is, is like the burden that puts on him yeah. instead of the fact that, you know, that's just who he is. Yeah. yeah that's cool. That's a cool, uh, cool observation. I think <laughs> Skylar says, uh, I'll never forget the disappointed text I got after Alex saw justice league. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, I was not happy about it. it was just, yeah. Yeah. She, I don't even think she's, she'd maybe seen it, but she didn't see it in theaters because I told her not to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now, now you've seen uh, Lego Batman, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My, I, I, which I argue is the best Batman movie ever. Uh, <laughs> it, sh- yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> I I really like uh, Batman Begins, and I really yeah. like uh, the 1990 and 1992 Batman movies. Okay, just don't um, say the third one of the Nolan. Uh, well, Joel Schumacher just uh, died today, so oh no, to him. Yep. Uh, oh. so the the fourth the third and fourth movie he uh he passed away today unfortunately uh. um as as wacky as those movies are they still have a place in my heart as, sure uh, surely do as you know getting getting to see you know live action robin uh, uh-huh. on the movie and you know nightwing to the, to an extent right um but those movies were just so colorful that uh, i think that's what like stuck my brain i even thought about like like what if one day i just like take the idea of the movie and like make it into a graphic novel but like fix all the problems that were created (laughs) Um, but uh i think you know i still think it'd be cool to see what would happen if uh they let uh what's his name tim burton direct the third batman movie oh yeah well, we'll never see that. So no, yeah. Wubba says Keaton Batman is the best. Yeah, he's one of the best. Yeah, so. yeah. So I, I think I read somewhere that um, the Keaton is coming back to be Batman in the uh, the new Flash thing they're doing. 
Yeah, apparently he's. I don't. Uh, I don't know if that's real or not, but I think they're probably still like airing out the contracts, probably for. Yeah. It, but uh, he's supposedly gonna be a other Earth version of Batman, oh, okay. like a multiverse kind of thing. So. I actually liked Batfleck. Um, I, I, thought I did he, too. I thought he did a really good job as, as a, an older Batman. I, I thought he did well. I think he did good in Batman v Superman. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, I'm not. I'm not sure why he gets so much uh, so much criticism, but I think he did a good job. I think he gets a lot of criticism just because uh, it's not really his like. In Justice League, you know that movie kind of tanked a lot of those characters for yeah. a lot of fan views, and Batman just happened to be one of the worst characters in that movie. <laughs> um, yeah, it's probably not Ben Affleck's fault. No. Um, but it's the way the movie was put out. Um, and unfortunately, we'll probably never see Ben Affleck Batman again, which, no. is, which is sad just because because of the backlash of Justice League kind of took him from directing. Because at one point, he was going to direct, write, and star in his own Batman movie, which I thought was going to be great because I love Argo. Yeah. Town, so yeah, that was good. thought that was going to be a, a you know, knock out of the park, but... Uh, that's that's what social media will do to to those major decisions. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, that that is unfortunate. So um, that that kind of leads me kind of into my next question. If you were if you were casting uh, uh, Cat and Mouse today, uh, if if the decisions, if somebody just said, "Hey, Alex, we need you to pick who the cast for uh, Cat and Mouse is going to be," who would you who would you cast? Um, Without probably, asking me or, or anything that I've said, who would you cast? I would probably cast. Uh, I don't know his name, but uh, I'll just like from the HBO show Righteous Gemstones. He's the uh, oldest son of uh, the main character. I think he he he's a ginger uh, or a light brown hair uh, actor, and I think he'd do good um, for. For mouse, I'm not really sure, because um, you got to pick someone that's that could look young enough to betray a, a teenager. To are a you talking about the character's name would be Kelvin Gemstone, maybe? Possibly. Or I'll, I'll look it up. Oh, okay. Well, I was gonna say I've got the cast right here. Um, let me see if I can't share the screen. Um. I've never seen the show, so that's you should why. you should definitely watch it though. It's it's really, really? hilarious. Yeah, his name is duh, duh, duh. his name is his name of the show is Gideon. Okay, and, uh, so S- Skyler Desando. Yeah. Okay. So that's who I would do as uh, as cat, and then for mouse, I would maybe do. Uh, Probably someone from Riverdale. There's a lot of young actresses on that show that could, could probably do it. Obviously, can't really pinpoint one just because. Yeah. They, any of them could probably do it, to be honest. But maybe even, you know, you race bend, you know, one of the characters, too, possibly. Yeah. Well, um, uh, you know, um, shoot. Uh, Bo- Bobby's, uh, she's Latino. Yeah. So. Yeah, and my daughter had. We, we talked about this before. It's like, who would we, who would we uh, pick for mouse? And my problem is, I don't know because I would want her to be Latino, but I don't yeah. know enough of. I don't know enough young Latino actors. Uh, the the ones that I the one that comes to my mind is they're all way too old. You know, yeah. it's like hey, no, 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 you can't get those. Uh, so what what about uh, someone like a, a, a demon? Uh, well, he's obviously someone that's going to be in a lot of makeup. Uh, so yeah. I, uh, I'm not really sure because, and, and with him, you don't really have to worry about age as much because right, right. I'm, I don't even really know what is his age. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> um, uh, who would be a demon? Yeah, obviously, have to have someone that's that's witty. I mean, maybe you know, David Harbour would be an interesting choice. He was a uh, Although the Hellboy movie didn't do well, I think he was a good Hellboy. The story okay, was good, yeah. but uh, I thought he well, was that's good. interesting. He's good in Stranger Things, so yeah, yeah. He's witty yeah. and he's he's a big guy, so yeah. 
And then what about uh, Kinoich? Kinoich. Um, I think her, I mean, why not just go with, uh, what's her name? Is it like Annie Wu or whatever? I, I, I can tell you who I've picked out for it, but I, I, I'm not sure who Annie Wu is. Let me look her up. Annie Wu? It's W-U? Uh, I mean, like, uh, that's not her name. I don't know. Let's see. Um, Any? I don't think yeah. that's her name. Okay. So I'm trying um, to look it up. Uh, da, da, da. Lucy Lou. Oh, Lucy Lou. Obviously, uh, might be a little older, but I honestly don't know how old Kanoich is. So. Yeah. Um, I had thought of. Um, oh shoot. Um, Iron Fist. So oh, I see. I forgot uh, her name too. Yeah, I gotta look her uh, name up. Uh, Iron. Constant Swoo would be good one too. This cast. Um, Jessica Henwick. Uh, yeah. Who, who plays Colleen Wing? Uh, I think. Uh, I think she. Did you watch any of Iron Fist? I watched the first season. So. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, she was. She was clearly the best part of that show. <laughs> so, who would you have be Widowmaker then? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think. Uh, what What's uh, her descent? Like, what's her uh, her race? I, I, you know, I, I, I never. And this is kind of funny because you know we talked about uh, character building the last couple of weeks. She's not one that I said. You know, oh, she. This is what she needs to be. Um, she's just a dark haired, you know, uh, Caucasian. What if um, we did, uh, Angelina Jolie? There you go. God, yeah, she would be good. Yep. Cause she can be mean on film. Yep. Uh, I, I've, I've seen it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she can be manipulative and uh, yep. she can do it all. So, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 and you, so then we have to have someone have someone, you know, a character for Brad Pitt, right? You know, have <laughs> be on set together. Yeah. And, and duke it out. So. <laughs> Maybe well, he's the original Silver Dollar or something. Yeah, you know, I don't know. So when I when I cast, uh, when I was asked this question, you know, 30 years ago, uh, my choices were uh, Nick Nolte for Cat and... Um, uh, oh, crap. I can't even think of her name now. Um uh, I can't think of her name. I see her face, but I can't think of her name. Uh, Skylar says, uh, clearly I'd be Mouse. Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, she thought of the, she came up with the Skylar name. Could have saved a Google if we just listened to her. Uh, Wubba said, uh, Ron Parlman for uh, Demon. I'm, I'm guessing yeah. that's who he's saying. Yeah. Trisser on t Twitch said, hi. Um, yeah, Skylar says constant woo, uh, and then uh, Lena Hetty. So, uh, yeah, it's always fun to do, you know, it's always kind of fun to uh, try to you know, imagine actors into the, the roles that uh, you draw every day, yeah. Um, so, um, all right, so it's Tyndall. 10 to 11 so let's kind of let's kind of wrap this up so what do you see um what what's your what's your anticipated schedule here when do you see wrapping this up and then um uh, number four and then moving on to demon's tales so uh i would hope that uh this number three uh, gets finished pencil in in the, within the next two weeks um and then uh from there uh, hopefully finish issue four, try to finish it within uh, two to three months and and uh, get to working on Demon Tales before the end of 2020. We'll see. Nice. 2020 has been quite the uh, <laughs> yeah, quite the year. Quite uh, the hayride. I guess they, they got 2014 wrong, right? Or uh, whatever it was, uh, the end of the year. Oh, 2012, the, yeah. 2012, the, yeah. The Mayan calendar or whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> so they got it wrong eight years, but... Yeah, so and uh, so hopefully that's that that's the schedule that goes by maybe even quicker. I don't know. We'll see. Very cool, but we can Very all cool. hope, right? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. 
Well, you know, um, really the only thing we can do is just keep uh, keep moving forward, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think the the minute we stop moving is the minute uh, we run into dangerous uh, dangerous ground. If, as long as we're moving forward. We're moving, even if we're going the wrong direction, right? We're, we're yeah. moving. Um, but a uh, good thing now, we have a bunch of uh, Silverline projects in the works. So, yeah. you know, we have a bunch of teams working instead of just uh, two or three. Yep. Did you hear um, Did you hear me, my, my count? I can't remember where I did it, uh, if I was live or whatever. You know the total, the total number of them now? I'm going to guess it's uh, around 12. Really, really, really close. It's about fifteen. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it is uh, good. It's gonna be an interesting problem uh, putting them in specific kickstarters uh, the way we yes. have them. But yeah, that's a good problem to have. It is a good problem to have. Yeah, 20, uh, 2021 is certainly going to be uh, an interesting year because uh, there's going to be a lot of new, a lot of new number ones hitting. Um, also, and- we. We might not have to go through diamond. So no, I know that's exciting. Um, I, 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 I've, I'm, I'm hoping that some of this will. Because my, my personal goals, I would love to see us uh, get to a point where we've got enough of them, kind of under our belt, so we can that we can actually start going into shops, working our way into mm-hmm. shops. And if we can, uh, you know, if we can target for me, if, if targeting next summer with Cat and Mouse and Kalis, the first two. Um, because you know, they should, they should, they should both be done all four issues early, early in the year. So we'll be able to solicit them and then, and then put them out regularly. And then hopefully, you know, by the time those are done, there'll be some others coming along, um, to, to follow them. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. Kalos is almost done. So, yep. Yeah. I, I got a message from, um, Lewis. That says he's almost uh, almost done with the, the third issue. So uh, even though I still don't have the artwork from him for number two because of uh, COVID, mm-hmm. uh, uh, they're they're just shut down in Argentina. He's like I he, he told me he drove around and uh, um, could there, there's just nothing open, so he just yep. literally cannot ship it to us. And we tried to ship him books and they were returned to us. Yeah, <laughs> it, it really uh, seriously, and it said uh, basically Argentina is closed. Yeah, um, yeah. Ovin says they were uh, dyslexic. The year they mentioned was uh, twenty twenty one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. So, uh, well, we've been we've been running it here on the the, the bottom some, Alex. But uh, for those who might be listening, um, because we are working to turn some of these into uh, to podcasts. Um, where can uh, where can people find you? Where do you where do you hang out the most online? Um, normally, it's probably going to be Instagram at Alex Galmore too. Um, I probably need to post a little more than I do, but that's where I post the most uh, with my art. And then uh, my Twitter is Alex Galmore twenty five, I believe. I don't really post that much on there, um, but that's another outlet you can reach me. And then uh, Facebook is just my name, Alex Galmore, and that's G A L L I M O R E. Um, so yeah. Excellent. Uh, and thank you everyone for, um, for watching and the good questions tonight. We appreciate uh, each and every one of you. Don't forget that Silverline has a, uh, a merch store. Um, you can find uh, links uh, pretty much all over, but it's, uh, if you go to uh, Zazzle, you want to look up at uh, Silverline Comics um, and you can find some, some pretty cool stuff. We need, we need some of you. We've got some cool stuff there. We need some of you to go order some stuff. We're just kind of waiting for that, uh, that notification that, you know, Hey, you, you sold one of these. So we can go, yay. Um, so yeah, there's cool stuff. Um, obviously we're, we're, we're broadcasting on the three different, uh, uh streams here. We've got the YouTube, uh, where you can find us at, um, a YouTube slash several line comics, uh, at, uh, Twitch, we are uh, Twitch Silverline Comics, and uh, also Facebook. Um, uh, Facebook, we're Silverline Comics. Uh, Tommy says, "Was great to watch." Uh, I agree, Tommy. It, it was fun to talk to him, and while we're chatting, just sit here and watch him watch. It's kind of like we're watching over his shoulder as he draws, right? <laughs> uh, I, I, I like that quite a bit. Wubba, Wubba says, uh, "Good time." 
so we're going to be back. I got to look. Uh, well, I don't know exactly what it was. So uh, don't forget, y'all, to tonight's Monday. On uh, Wednesday night, Sid and the Wednesday crew, uh, which includes Alex, they'll be back. And they're going to be talking about music and, and how it influences uh, the things that they do when they work. Uh, soundtracks and uh, do they have soundtracks in their minds? Inspirations, favorite bands, um, that kind of thing. I saw some some chit chat uh, from them, um, and I gotta let them know that no, 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 we cannot play music on the no. stream. No, yeah, I let them know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we don't we don't want that'll shut us down. We can talk about it. Let's just talk about it, but we're not gonna play it because. Uh, uh, but we can make, I like the idea. Someone uh, tossed out the idea of some, um, uh, playlist playlist. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I think it'd be a good idea if, uh, if, uh, all the, the participants are up to it, you know, say, Hey, this is Alex's playlist. This is Sid's playlist. This is Scott's playlist, that kind of thing. Um, I think that would be a, a lot of fun to do. Um, and then, so that's Wednesday night, 9 PM Eastern time with, uh, Sid, Sid and the crew. And then Sunday night, uh, I'll be back on, uh, the silver Sunday, with the Sunday crew, and we'll be talking about the same thing. Uh, <coughs> same thing, just with different people. And then next week, uh, I was supposed to have this open. <coughs> Excuse me, I cannot remember who is going to be the next week's one-on-one. -on -one. So let me pull up my calendar so I can let you know. Next week's one-on-one -on -one is going to be Barb Kelberg. So we're going to be with uh, Barb and uh all kinds of uh questions about her barb says 30 years experience and she's inked all kinds of different people so um so we'll see you wednesday sunday and then next week uh, with barb she's so, inking three different people right now she is she she's uh, she's a she's a machine um of course it does help that she's retired but uh, and, and on top of that she's also um she's also coloring she's coloring and writing yeah, she's coloring um, sirens and she is uh, writing divinity. So uh, Barb's Barb's a, a busy gal, and uh, and certainly we 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 love her here at Silverline. So, all right, everyone. Um, Skyler said it was fun to pick Alex's brain. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we'll see you all next time. And until then, make whoops, I didn't get that straight, did I? Uh, make mine silver line. There you go, Alex. All right. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night.